Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to enter the sacred mysteries, calling to mind our sins and God's infinite mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate in joy may protect and save us with perpetual power. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and Presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond those necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And so they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and, get and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will, I will give, give you thanks, thanks among the peoples, O Lord. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O my soul, awake, lyre and harp. I will awake the dawn. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. Your blessing, Father. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I call you my friends, says the Lord. 
and I have made known to you all that the Father has told me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. To this morning, maybe two homilies for the price of one. The first one, very a brief, a brief commentary, uh, simply about what we see in the Acts of the Apostles. That whole book of the Bible really shows us a picture of the early church, and there's a lot of things to pay attention to and learn from. Even in today's example, we see the desire on the part of the church to stay united. There's conflict, there's discord, there's disagreement. And instead of just saying, well, let's forget about that group and let's just do our thing, there's the effort to engage that conflict and to resolve it because there was a sense of the importance of unity, what we now just refer to as being the body of Christ, being united in Christ, seeking the truth together in love. And I think that that passage today is an example of that effort of the early church and one that we also are challenged to continue in our own day because we very much want to dismiss our rivals, our opponents, and those on the other side of any conversation. So to seek unity and be willing to dialogue in love, being willing to listen and to share. And the second is an example uh, from the uh, responsorial psalm. I give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. So my question to you, think about what are you consuming? What are you consuming? I'm thinking that in the broadest symbolic meaning of the word consuming. What do you take in? What do you watch? What do you pay attention to? What do you dwell on? All of those things in some ways are being offered to us from various platforms, whether it's the media, our conversations with our families, or with our friends. We're taking things in, and sometimes we choose to dwell on them, to pay attention to them, to focus on them. And that, whatever that choice is, has an effect on our mental and spiritual well-being. It's like a diet, right? It's like our food, okay? It has an impact on what we're, how we are dealing with stress and how we're dealing with crisis, what we choose to dwell on and take in and consume. And for us to stay strong and resilient, we need to feed ourselves and consume things that will make us strong and resilient in Christ. So be careful about what you're feeding on and feeding into, because some of those things will exhaust you. Hey, I struggle with it too, and I'm finding God calling me back to dwell in His Word, to dwell in the Bible. Choose to consume the Word of God in word and in deed. And just listen and savor these words 
as if they were food for your heart and your soul. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O my soul, awake lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. Can you taste that? That's the food that will sustain us and help us to thrive in the midst of a dark night or a desert experience. We are what we eat. Let's turn now to God and ask that he hear and answer the prayers we offer to him with loving and faithful hearts. May Pope Francis, the bishops, priests, and deacons support every member of the church to carry the yoke of Christ, confident in the mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. May there be a good spirit among all Christians so that they can give an authentic witness to Christ's commandment of love, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to the Lord. May we not be enticed by the cares and attractions of this world, but keep our hearts centered upon the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for the intentions of Annalie Holscher. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, look with love upon your people and hear the prayers offered to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and pleads and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The crucified is risen from the dead and has redeemed us. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we were announcing before Mass, uh, we re reiterate now after Mass, also for those who are joining us or will join us by video, uh, Mass time will be change starting Monday for daily Masses to 8.30. So starting Monday and through at least the rest of May, uh, 8.30 Mass instead of 9. Uh, doors will open at 7.45. Confessions begin at 7.45. Uh, and then the doors will be closed at 15 till um, 15 minutes before the Mass begins. 8.15. Which part? Oh no, the weekend mass times aren't changing. Uh, there will be no Saturday night mass. Well, this in weekend everything's the same. No, like this weekend, weekend everything's the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Saturday four at four p.m. in English, six p.m. in Spanish. Sunday nine a.m. in English, twelve noon in Spanish for this weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you.
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.